so excited about today in the podcast. Uh, I, we just met, first of all. I just met you. But Chad and Tori Masters were here yesterday recording an episode, and they pumped you guys up so high. Great. I, no, I, feel, really? <laughs> I feel like, I mean, I know y'all are married, mm-hmm. and Chad and Tori are married, but I kind of feel like y'all are all sort of... I have a connection that's really uh, pretty special. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, we do. I'm, well, Chad and I certainly have our bromance going on. Like yes. I was just texting him earlier. I was like, so um, what room are we staying in and what room are the, the wives staying in? <laughs> <laughs> All I need is a roomy twin, you know, and we're good. That's, that's kind of what I told him. Yeah. Yeah, we're – it's like we've – known them our whole lives even though it's only been what that's what i was gonna months. yeah we've known them for maybe six months yeah but it feels like we've known them our whole life and it sounds so cliche and so cringy saying that but yeah no it's a blessing to know them well y'all y'all are melena and jordan sissiati and is it sissiati like with a, an italian that's accent it. yes. yes well in italian it'd be chichotti mm-hmm. but we just say sissiati because we're we're american Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I actually first came across uh, your podcast, As For Me My House. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was 2019 when I oh. came across it. Okay, and right when it like... So you're an OG. Wow. Like OG. Yeah, Noah, who's here, is his dad had pulled a, a few podcasts that we were like looking at. Married couples that had podcasts that were mm-hmm. excellent, high quality, and we were looking at y'all's stuff back then. Wow. Uh, like so. Ollie, like with Alethea <laughs> screaming in the background. Yeah, that was back when like, because when we launched it, our daughter was a month old. And I remember I used to like nurse her during the podcast episodes. And like it was as raw and unfiltered as it, it could possibly get. And at first we were going to like cut that out or try to muffle the sound. But then yeah. people started messaging us like, no, I think it's so sweet to hear Alethea cooing in the background. It is. Or, yeah, yeah, it's authentic. It just kind of makes it like you're in our family room with like us literally like in out. our like little tiny office recording together yeah but even the thumbnail I mean, is y'all sitting there y'all styled it well the the branding for uh the the show title and everything was well done oh that's all Thanks. her it, yeah <laughs> that's you can't you know there, there is a difference between you know just putting together a podcast going on canva and just creating a thumbnail real quick then mm-hmm. just putting it out there mm-hmm. uh whenever you have a stylistic nature to it and do it high quality even if it's just the branding side of mm-hmm. it it makes a difference it makes yeah. it more approachable and y'all did a great job Thank you. Uh, and so that, that was a couple of years ago uh you're in detroit michigan area talk mm-hmm. about talk about life now i wish we could move because it's so cold over there texas is calling us i don't know we'll see what the lord has but for now like i still work there our family's there mm-hmm. um yeah it's the great white north and it's cold and it's like it was single digits Fahrenheit when we left this morning. But yeah, we got like um, a storm last week. Yeah. We were supposed to get 16 inches, but we got like probably we only got six 10, or you know. seven. <laughs> but it's <laughs> magical in the summer. Yeah, I mean, it's gorgeous yeah, it in the is. Summer. It well, is. Everyone's it is. like, oh, you get the seasons there because I'm from South Florida originally and she's from Brazil. Mm-hmm. So we just know like hot and rainy or dry. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. having, you know, the leaves changing colors and all that, it's really cool. And yeah. So. Gosh, we've been, you know, been married for almost five years now, mm-hmm. and uh, we have two little adorable pride and joy kids, Alethea, who's going to be three next week, mm-hmm. and Ari's one and a half, wow. mm-hmm. and we got one in the oven. Yeah, so. I knew that's mm-hmm. congrats. Mm-hmm. That's Thank awesome. You. Yeah, the Lord's just been so good to us, and, you know, it's, it's certainly come with its challenges, and I feel like we've jam-packed a lot of life in a very short five years, like we mm-hmm. got... Uh, we well, we're high school sweethearts, so yeah. When people are like, "Oh, you guys are so young to get married or to have kids," we think, "Well, first off, that's kind of relative, and second off, you know, we're we met when we were 15 and 17 mm-hmm. in high school. We started dating, and um, when Melana started to kind of do her thing on YouTube full time, it was something that really opened up a lot of doors for us to say like this is a ministry first and foremost to yeah. represent the lord mm-hmm. and second off to connect with people and share the gospel and something that we do with our podcast mm-hmm. is kind of talk about just what's going on in our life and what the lord puts on our heart we try to not script it too much just enough to kind of stay on task because melana and the lord know i'll go on my tangents <laughs> but um yeah we just try to keep it keep it real and uh, it's it's been what's awesome. church life up there first of all <laughs> all i know about michigan from like the political side is uh whitmer the the, the governor up there mm-hmm. uh during the COVID. <laughs> so uh, i i would i would not want to judge an entire state based upon the politics of of the moment of COVID. Yeah. uh however the the people you go through 
Uh, I've been to Grand Rapids. Uh, we have a pastor friend in Kalamazoo, yeah. uh, Michigan. I don't know a lot of people though in the Detroit area, church-wise especially. Yeah. What, what's what's the church environment like there? So we recently started not bouncing around, but him and I met at church. So we went to like the youth um, Bible study. And so we had been at that church. Like I started going there when I was like four, were you like five? Like we both mm-hmm. started going there when we were really young up until we, we got married. And then we were just praying about it because we were like, Lord, is this where you want us? Because we were pregnant at the time. And I was like, where do you want us to raise our kids? And we wanted to make sure the Lord had us where he wanted us. We weren't just there because we were comfortable. And it's like what we knew. We knew everyone there. Like we grew up there. Big church, um, small church. What was big it? Big church. It was mm-hmm. like a mega church. But it didn't feel so mega just because we had been there for so many years and were involved in so many different ministries. We put um, Mary and Joseph in the church show, oh, okay. like the yeah. Christmas show and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't, can't grow a beard now. Still can't grow a beard back then. But uh, What are you talking what's about? What's on your face? Well, you know. Uh, you, you've got that uh, really suave beard. <laughs> This is the Detroit, you know, hipster beard. Yeah. That's what it is. But, uh, no, I mean, we, uh, yeah, we were so connected there. And another thing, uh, just to add to what Melana said, was at the time that we were kind of feeling the Lord stirring in us to kind of maybe step out of our comfort zone a little bit and mm-hmm. venture somewhere else. Um, I was going through the Secret Service Academy, and it's a roughly nine month total, it's like two phases training. So I was gone, and to add to that, Milena told me that she was pregnant with Alethea. Like, mm-hmm. I came back after about a month of being away, and she's like, yeah, I'm pregnant. And mm-hmm. The whole the video timing was, was like there. so good. It was really, really good timing. Yeah, so she basically went her whole pregnancy like without me, mm-hmm. and so I had that in my mind, trying to focus on like doing my thing mm-hmm. and getting back home to be with her and, and Alethea when they were born, but... That was like a really straining time. And then when COVID hit, all the churches start kind of, you know, closing and Mm -hmm. uh, going online, which um, I was always of the persuasion, like that's a temporary thing or like, hey, you're Mm -hmm. sick, like, you know, catch it online. But that's not how church is meant to be done, Mm -hmm. you know. And and I think when you forsake meeting together, I was just uh, reading Hebrews 10, like don't forsake meeting together, but... Mm -hmm encourage one another all the more as you see the day of the Lord's return approaching. Mm -hmm. And so for for us, we wanted to be in a community of a church family that was encouraging and strengthening one another in in community and fellowship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we started praying and we said, Lord, we're we don't want to be comfortable like Melana said, we want to be obedient. So wherever you're leading us, we want to we want to be open about that and and receiving that. So we bounced around, like Melana said, we kind of tried out this church and there's a little bit smaller church nearby that I guess had some internal drama going on. We, we don't even know all the details, not our business, but ended up, they kind of ended up splitting and we started praying and asking the Lord to just open up the door again. <laughs> We're like, just started getting into a like I know oh, this we is a finally, great church and now I finally got the kids to, to like stay at like mm-hmm. the kids center without mm-hmm. crying the entire time like they went which is a huge they accomplishment both, yeah. I know they both went and stayed and then the next week we got hit with this news and I was like okay yeah so it was a really miraculous story how the Lord just organically took this one guy who felt led to start it was eight couples mm-hmm. that was Melanie and I were one of the eight couples that like were part of the original meeting and then the idea was to invite two couples so then you know you'd kind of multiply the next mm-hmm. week and then the following week and by like what three weeks we were up to a hundred people wow and all crammed in a basement there was no not a penny was spent on like advertising or there's no website no social media page it was just all word there wasn't even a church name yet yeah we didn't even have a church you know most name. most mega churches start like that yeah there's like this small group that meets mm-hmm. and all that fire and you know passion yeah. is what's bringing people there and then you lose that because yep. it grows and then you know but that mm-hmm. i remember moments both at my dad's church growing up uh, in a church here where it was the smallest time was whenever you felt the most passion because mm-hmm. you knew everyone there, you could see everyone. And then at some point it's 20,000 members mm-hmm. and you lose some of that, yeah. mm-hmm. which is still good because it's ministering more people, but yeah. then it's hard to have that community feel to it. So y'all are in mm-hmm. the fun time of, yeah. uh, of church in that, in that environment, the getting married young, 
because y'all were 22 and 20. Is that right? Yes. Yes. I, I was 20 when I got married. Okay. Um, that was 24 years ago. Wow. So I, it's been a long time. But I remember being 20, getting married, starting a journey. Mm-hmm. But my wife and I, we lived uh, in Amarillo for two years and then moved to the Metroplex. And we were pretty close. But, you know, the military, Secret Service side, how did that affect you so early on in the marriage? Oh, gosh. It was so hard. But because we had been married for six months before you left, that was like essentially what our marriage was founded on. And I feel like we've slowly started to kind of like unpack. And it's funny because I was just thinking about this the other day of like how little we knew about marriage back then, which is so obvious, but we felt so confident in ourselves. Um, But I feel like we're slowly still like unpacking some stuff that I feel like I've had to work through because I couldn't depend on Jordan because he literally wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's like so contrary to what a marriage should be. Like you, you are one together, like you should be depending on each other. Um, And so me having my like independence has been something that I feel like I've kind of had to like deal with and be like, no, like I don't need to be independent. Like we are a team together. We are one together. (laughs) Um, So, but slowly. Well, let me give an example of that real quick. So what she means by we're a team is when the kids are having a meltdown and it's like 7 30 8 p.m when like they're supposed to be down hour, like the mm-hmm. worst time they're of the supposed day. to be nat- like sleeping already for the night but yeah. of course they haven't been bathed and of course like there's just food everywhere yep. and the- everything's a mess and i'm up to here and melena's up to here we start like pointing at each other Bickering like at each other like it's your fault or it's your fault no it's your and it- then we're like hold on and so i've had to literally like stop in the middle of us like arguing and be like mm-hmm. Wait a second, babe. Like hands. Babe, we're, we're a team. <laughs> like I'm not a, I'm These not against kids are you. not going to not going to divide us, not going to destroy us. <laughs> no. I was like it's it's us versus them, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But no, so like we just have to remind ourselves that like Melina said is being kind of in that formative time. Like there's no teacher like experience. And mm-hmm. so while we had certainly so many great mentors and resources in our pre-marriage season Mm -hmm. once we like tied the knot and man this thing's for real and we said our vows we we did all all the whole thing and made Mm -hmm. it made it official now we're like okay um how exactly does this work you know so Uh kind of have to rely on that wisdom before us and start undoing some of the bad habits that we Mm -hmm. picked up on originally Mm -hmm. yeah and then i got pregnant so it felt like our first six months of marriage was like him being gone in the secret service and then like me being towards end of our pregnancy and then having a baby, mm. which having a baby definitely changes the dynamic, obviously. All within what, a year and a half of being married? Two years? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So the we had to like kind of navigate through that too. The secret service is no joke. I was, uh, my wife and I were eating at a Mexican food restaurant in North Dallas, uh, 2008-ish. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden... There's these guys in suits that walked in, <laughs> giant. Uh-huh. Just they all felt like they were from another, another dimension. And, <laughs> like the glasses uh, and everything, yeah, all black. And they, and of course, there there was SUVs outside. Mm-hmm. And Laura Bush uh, and George Bush live in North Dallas area. Mm-hmm. And Laura Bush was having dinner or something with somebody. It's Mikusina. Mikusina is kind of a staple here. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just thought to myself, where do they find these Secret Service guys? <laughs> yeah. what, what, do they do they go on some sort of, uh, you know, scouting yeah. mission just, just to pluck them out of places? Mm-hmm. And they're intense guys. Uh, so the Secret Service for you, though, where why was that on your radar? What did you want to do with, with that route in your yeah, career? Yeah, so I actually, before that, I went to Bible college, uh, feeling that the Lord calling me into ministry. And I just always assumed that that meant, well, I'll go be a pastor at a church. Mm-hmm. And uh, as I started getting to my final semester, my senior year of undergrad, and like, okay, I'm going to go get my MDiv and uh, study in seminary, but I should probably see if I can start working at a church just because I'm getting married and like need to provide for my, my new family. And uh, started throwing my resume out there. Started, of course, at our home church, the Big Mega Church. And was a lot of uh, absolutely. We'll we'll get you in. We'll call you. We'll we'll follow up. And then there was no follow up. That happened half a dozen times. And I just kept throwing something at the wall, hoping something would stick. And there wasn't anything happening. So I was like, I took a step back. I, I talked to my mentors and my parents, whom I revere and honor their their advice so much, even today, especially today. <laughs> and uh, I was like, 
Lord, I thought you were calling me into this. And the Holy Spirit kind of prompted me in, in, in my heart to say, like, no, I, I want you to be the church out there. I want you to be on mission out there, not so much in the church. And so I got connected with a buddy of mine who was a chaplain at the time with the uh, 82nd. And he's like, dude, have you ever thought about being a chaplain in the army? Like, we need we need chaplains. And I was like, well, I always had a tremendous respect for the military and uh, never really knew if I would if it was for me. So I prayed about it, got open more doors, and next thing I know, I was in a military police battalion as a chaplain candidate and wow. shadowing and became a, like, did that for a little while. And then we started doing As For Me in My House. And one of the best pieces of advice my mom gave me was like your ministry first and foremost is to your family. Mm-hmm. And so I started feeling a little bit of like a, almost like a guilt. Like I need to make sure my wife and my kids are ministered to before I can even minister to anyone else. Cause if I don't have this somewhat in check or at mm-hmm. least as my priority, then I'm not much help to anyone else. So that's when I kind of, took us another step back and said, well, I, I like what the Lord's doing and I feel like he's got me in the right spot, but still feeling like there's something uh, professionally or, or uh, I guess, vocationally to do as well. And uh, my father was in law enforcement. He just retired. And uh, he's like, you ever thought about, you know, being an agent? There's a lot of uh, Let's see, people. Was he in a, in a federal agent? DEA. Okay. Yeah. So, he uh, he's like, there's a lot of people in law enforcement that need. You can almost like act as a chaplain, and I think you'd make a good agent. This, that, and the other. I said, yeah, I'll pray about it and see see what the Lord does. So, mm-hmm. Secret Service needed a lot of people, and uh, I guess they were pretty desperate because they hired me really quickly. And uh, I was like, sweet, I guess I'm a Secret Service. Okay, agent but now. it's not easy to get into it either. I mean, I would. There's I a would process. It is difficult. a very intense process. Yeah, there's a process. I mean, they. It's nothing out of the ordinary. It's like full scope top secret SCI background investigations mm-hmm. and polygraph exams where they stare into your soul and pull out all your deepest dark secrets, you know, that kind of uh, thing. Yeah. Other than that, <laughs> uh, it's pretty, pretty standard procedure. Um, yeah. Everyone goes through that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't, but the thing is you don't want like a wacko with a gun. No, you don't. Next and, to the but president, you know, so you know. my in-laws, they work for a government facility, a nuclear uh, facility. And they said to me at one point that at any given time, there's 5% of the people on, on, on the payroll that are moles. They're working for foreign governments. And you huh. talk about the amount of Putin or whoever out there that's trying to get access to information, mm-hmm. that it would be difficult to know that you know that you know that you know that the person you're hiring isn't. Uh, hasn't been planted a long time ago mm-hmm. yeah. and is looking for the opportunity to join a, gov- a government agency. Both yeah. on, on both sides. We're sending people over there too. We're so. going to get my, yeah. hold on, my tinfoil hat on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're exactly right. That that stuff does happen. I mean, they do a very thorough job, but there's always stuff. That's why they, like, they'll recertify people's backgrounds every five years and mm-hmm. making sure, you know, where'd you, why'd you go on this? Tr- like even if you go out of the country, like on a personal vacation like they want to know where you're going how you how long you're staying and all that so yeah there's a lot of uh try to put some fail safes in place but um again it was did that did the secret service thing for a few years and it was just really hard just being completely honest and guys yes. told me that from the beginning but there's still guys on the job not to knock knock not knocking them but literally they would say to me hey you could always get another wife can't get another secret service job mm-hmm. i'm like how do you i i'm not <laughs> And I would be in the same room, like sitting right next to Jordan. Well, the I'm divorce like, rate is in that um, in that industry. The divorce rate is yeah, very high. Yeah, yeah. There and are guys he, that were married four or five times. Yeah. It's like, dude, why why are you still getting married? Yeah, and well, he was gone like five to six days out of the week. Mm-hmm. So he was gone a lot, and it wasn't like, oh, I know my schedule for the month. Like, I'm going here, here, here. Like, it would literally be like he would get a text at like 8 p.m. at night, and he would have to like leave in a couple of hours. Mm. And at the time, our daughter was like six months old. And so it was just really challenging having like gone through the pregnancy alone and then essentially like the first year of my daughter's life alone, too. It was it was stressful. And talk a little bit about like the village, taking a village and like yes. how intric- integral it was for like, yeah. your mom and yeah. my family to be close by mm-hmm. and like, really rely on in those yeah. times, too. Because you'd imagine I'm feeling pretty guilty about like, oh, mm-hmm. 
duty calls, but I'm also like, see you next week. You know, I know it was hard. Yeah. yeah, it was hard because I didn't want to guilt trip him or like make him feel bad. But there would be times where I'm like, oh, it really sucks. They have to leave right now. Like, you know, she's so young, mm-hmm. like so young when i think about it because at the time we were kind of just surviving we were not thriving we were surviving Mm -hmm. and barely surviving Mm -hmm. um so when you're going through that you're not really thinking about anything you're literally just going and just doing what you need to do to get things done and had i not had like his mom and my mom and like my sister and like my village i don't know how i would have done it because it's so much pressure and we have two dogs Mm -hmm. very needy dogs okay we have pit bulls more children yeah (laughs) literally like having newborns they Mm -hmm. poop in the house still like they're so obnoxious Mm -hmm. (laughs) so like taking care of them and i was pregnant too because like the last time i watched you had a dog on your lap yes microphones see she yes well i mean she's like chill when she wants to be but like still (laughs) she's like a lot of work they're they require a lot of attention and that's been a big theme in all of your content that you make and we make together is like find your family find your tribe find your Mm -hmm. your village because it doesn't have to necessarily be your your blood relatives it could be close friends or we have a lot of Mm -hmm. military families that they're they're moving every few years and it's Mm -hmm. like hard for them to put roots down and connect with people Mm -hmm. but they find people in this similar situation with them and they like Mm -hmm. they're like a pact they're 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 together. So we, we always encourage people like it takes a village to raise your kids and to mm-hmm. be there for one another, bearing one yeah. another's burdens. And, mm-hmm. and as the scripture talks about, but that's for us just been such a godsend. And mm-hmm. even still today to have that. Yeah. Opinion. And I, like Jordan mentioned earlier, I was born in Brazil and we you speak moved Portuguese. I do. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when we moved to America, I was like three years old maybe a little bit younger, but all of our family lived there and still does live there. So I did not grow up with any family. It was just like my sister, my mom and my dad. Mm. And that was it. Um, And so I knew that like once we started having kids that I wanted them to be involved with their grandparents, be involved with other people and like give them this village because you can't do it just by with your parents and your siblings, you know, is that going to keep you all in Michigan for a long time because of that? That's the yeah, dilemma. That, have to move everybody that is the yeah. dilemma. Texas. We'll always so. say like, if we could just pick up everyone and just go somewhere warm, we there's would. There's internet here. <laughs> there's there's cameras. There's internet. You can. You guys got color TV. Here. Yeah, we got everything you need. <laughs> it's not hard. <laughs> I know, but yeah. Well, I so I knew about the podcast. I really didn't know that you had a separate YouTube channel until recently, until I got to know the masters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you've got a massive following on your channel. Mm-hmm the the environment there is different i'm not i'm probably not in your demographic to target market no you were <laughs> like doing, my one percent <laughs> yeah you're doing like make it i got like 99 percent girls yeah uh but it's a great channel a lot of content you do a lot of work there uh you know with an with an audience that large you're gonna get all the crazies coming out on mm-hmm. on youtube mm-hmm. uh, for example uh my dad he he does marriage and he does end time stuff Okay. And we just posted a video uh, mm-hmm. on flat earth theory, just kind of debunking it. And you would have thought <laughs> that we just said, you know, that <laughs> that 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 God had, you know, uh, I don't know, just that the Garden of Eden wasn't real or whatever. People came out of nowhere going, yeah. how dare you? You were deceived. NASA's deceived you. The I'm not talking about one or two people. Came yes. For you. There was thousands of, of comments mm-hmm. from people saying... You are not reading the you are you are not reading the Bible the right way. When the Bible when God created the world, there was four corners. It's flat. There's a firmament. Uh, the way that and then yeah. some guy sent in like a 15 page PDF with graphics and oh charts my gosh. and scriptures. Th- please tell me you had a thumb drive too. Well, <laughs> it was just a so, quintessential. So thumb I'm drive. sitting thinking thinking to myself, am I the one taking crazy pills? Is NASA <laughs> deceiving me this whole time? I was like. Is Elon even sending anything in space? Are there not satellites around? Mm-hmm. You start asking these simple questions going, if these, if there's that many people that believe that the earth is flat, what am I missing here? Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. So the, the, the YouTube is just an opportunity for all of the people who have, have an opinion, first of all, but also have crazy statements uh, to mm-hmm. come out. Yeah. And I've noticed a little bit of that on your channel. Uh, a little. I've no, noticed a little bit of that. <laughs> so, and I'll say a this. I'll, I'll back. I'll backdrop that with this statement. 
So Joel Osteen, who is, uh, we I know him personally mm -hmm. uh, through my family, met him personally. One of the nicest guys, honestly, I've ever met, mm. hands down. In the pastoral world, he is, I don't know of another pastor who's purely as nice and genuinely as nice as he is. Mm. He loves the church. Mm -hmm. uh, he serves the church. What you see on TV is just a little bit of a, um, uh, just a little bit of a snippet of really what he does every right. every weekend at Lakewood and all mm -hmm. that. People just hate on him all day long, and I don't like it because I know him personally. It's mm. the same thing I, I would say like with y'all is I know y'all now a little bit better, but through Chad and Tori and just getting to know your ministry, mm -hmm. you're good people. So when people make comments, it's it's irritating because they don't know the, the real person. Right. They're seeing just a uh, a little bit of time on, a, on an internet channel. Yeah. So talk to me. I try not to look at any comments on our social. Sometimes you have to. Yeah. So how has that played into the the universe that you've created? Yeah, I I would just to the point that you're making. I feel like it's really easy to like dehum. What's the word I'm sorry? Dehumanize. Dehumanize yeah. someone. Yes, because it's like oh they're like on my screen just like other people I see on commercials or like they just think you're not a real person. You don't have real feelings. Like it's just a show. It's not real life and. Like what you're saying is just like scripted because that's what people are so used to. I feel like e even though YouTube has been around for a while, like vlogs and stuff, like people like actually taking you into their home is still relatively new. So I think people are still kind of under the illusion that things are scripted or like there's this like whole scene set up. But in reality, it's not. It's like literally mm -hmm. I am posting what is going on in my life like. I am pregnant, so I will post about being pregnant. You know, it's not like, okay, in this season, you're going to be pregnant. Like, it's the, it's, the, no, it's real life. You know, yeah. yeah. So I feel like people easily come out of the woodworks and come out of nowhere because it's like, they just, they have a lot of stuff to say. And because you're only seeing such a small glimpse, it's so easy to judge those like 10, 15 minutes and be like, well, if that's how this person is in those 10, 15 minutes, that's how they probably are the 24 hours of the day. And it's like, no. No, not at all. There's like so much else that goes on or like just like sitting down and seeing people mm -hmm. makes you remember that they're human and they like have feelings and stuff. So, yeah. Well, I want to encourage you just to push through it because there's a lot. Of oh, people, I am. Yeah. And I know you, you probably don't pay attention to some of it. And you shouldn't. Yeah. Uh, My but, two but, cents on that, too, just to compliment Milena is I have a principle where I will never post or text or put something out on the interwebs yeah. that I would not say to somebody face to face. If I can't look you in the eye and tell you the exact same thing that I've written out in some yeah. scroll paragraph, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that just for me is a personal conviction, but something I do, especially whenever, you know, the mob comes from Milena and, and crucifies something that she says or does or whatever, you, there's, there's never winning with the mob. So you can't ever like, you know, you never win. So Never. you just kind of stick mm -hmm. to yourself and you you, mm -hmm. you might be humbled and ask the Lord to work on you. But yeah. for me, when I see things or kind of how I react is I just, I'm really trying to discipline myself and the Lord to pr have, have prayer be my first response to these people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because knowing what Melana just said is they don't know the real you. They just think that it's some, they, they think you're, you're, in, in hu not human because of you posting a video on social media. Mm -hmm. And so that gives them free grounds and reins to do whatever, mm -hmm. like, like the Coliseum with you or whatever. But mm -hmm. I try to, I don't want to be double standard in, in my thinking. So I try to apply that same thing to that comment. Like there's a person behind this mm -hmm. comment. There's, right. there's a, for whatever reason that they feel that they need to do this. Like what's going on in their life? What, what are That's they? That's what I was going to say. Like the quote, like hurting, uh, like hurting people hurt others. It is so true. And if you don't think it is just hop on the internet for a second, yeah. you know, like there's no way that someone who is content and the Lord is like living through them would do stuff like no, that. So you true. really just have to pull back and be like, how could I, in my response, show them the love that they so desperately need? Mm -hmm. um, Share about some of the messages that you heard from your mom and Melanie, people reaching out to them. Oh yeah. So I, the Lord like really put on my heart to not address the stuff, but just kind of 
talk about a lot of what was going on. And it was like a hundred percent, just like the Holy spirit speaking through me. Cause I was using words I don't use or like being all fancy and stuff. And I was <laughs> like, it's just like before the Lord was just like, I was so into his word that he really, it was amazing. But, um, with after that video came out, a couple of people actually ended up messaging me that had created like drama videos about me mm. and apologized. And they were like, I thought I was doing the Lord's work, but it was not the Lord's work. And I feel so convicted and I'm so sorry. And it was like, whoa, what? Like, I did not expect that at all. And this was like, I've just been in the season of like contentment. Like, I'm OK that people are going to come after us because they forever will. Like they came after Jesus. They literally crucified Jesus. This is no n nothing new here. So yeah. I was content with all the drama staying and continuing getting worse. Like I was the Lord put such peace in my heart and such joy in my face that like I just didn't really care. You know, it's kind of like, I'm so sorry you feel that way. But like the Lord is really calling me to do this. And the only person that will cancel me is the Lord. So until he tells me that he's done with his ministry, then I'll stop. Yeah. Not the people. Well, the truth is that means you've arrived. The, the, that level, feels good to be here. Well, it, uh, it, it's just, feels just the really truth. Good. I mean, if you, if you have, if you've gotten to a certain level where people are paying attention to your ministry, you're talking about it, picking it apart, whatever, it just means right. you've gotten to the to the size where you're reaching more people than ever, and mm -hmm. so you're going to have to, you know, eat yeah. the meat, spit out the bones, well, sort of thing. Well, and the enemy attacks those who are glorifying God and expanding His kingdom. So I'm not threatened by the enemy. It doesn't mean. I don't want anyone to misunderstand to think that we're above reproach or anything or that, you know, no. the Lord hasn't humbled us in ways because he certainly has yes, and, and yeah. will continue to because we're, we're still flawed and, and being sanctified. But mm -hmm. at the same time, um, we know when, like, we need to own up to things and when yeah. we just, like you said, just need to, like, push through and say this is an attack or this is not warranted or this is completely fabricated and mm -hmm. I'm not going to apologize for it. Mm -hmm. And I, it reminds me of a uh, how how my posture and Melania's postures, how we desire to be whenever facing opposition like this. Reminds me of a clip of uh, Jocko Willink during a podcast. Somebody asked him a, a, a email question like, "What if uh, somebody like challenged you to a fight or bumped into you at a bar and like was like trying to be all tough and like macho and kind of outman you?" He's like, "Oh, if I accidentally like cut someone off." Or uh, accidentally bump into somebody and spill their drink, or it's like, hey, hey, my my bad, dude. Hey, can I buy you another one? Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't see you there. Like, you're talking. This dude is like, he could kill you eight thousand ways with yeah, a, exactly. with a paperclip. <laughs> he's like with a pencil. Yeah, yeah I mean, he's John just a, he's just a he's a unit, and he's got like such a calm, mild manner response to things because he's mm -hmm. actually been in like heated situations. So I try to apply that same idea of like. We have nothing to prove. We have nothing to, we don't have a chip on our shoulder. We're just trying to do what the Lord's doing. Yeah, and I have a daughter who's almost 15. Uh, I would be thrilled if she was watching your content. I mean, just Aww. getting to know, you know, from your perspective, how to be a wife, a mother, you know, how to go about your daily life. Mm -hmm. uh, there's people on our team. Shout out to McKaylee from a social media team. She uh, She's the one that introduced us to the Masters originally and, and, and also brought you guys into the fold. Uh, that's, there's still a, a, an enormous amount of people out there that they care about that kind of content. Mm -hmm. They want to learn from people who are a little bit ahead of them mm -hmm. that are doing life in a very significant way. Having three kids is significant. I have three kids. Mm -hmm. You might as well just keep going. I don't know how many <laughs> y'all want to have, but after did three, the, did the three like, cause for us going from zero to one was a challenge. Mm -hmm. One to two was like, okay, is three going to throw us off? Is three like? Do you want to be encouraged or discouraged? I just we want, want the, the truth. truth. Okay. okay, yeah. You we can't handle the truth. <laughs> yeah, you we just can't. want to be prepared. Okay, this is this is the, the the brutal honesty of a guy with three kids. So my daughter's fourteen. I have a ten year old son, and and an eight year old son. Okay. We tried for four years to have our daughter. Finally got pregnant. Had her. We tried for like three years to have our son. Finally mm -hmm. had him. And then our third. I was actually gonna go get fixed mm -hmm. no other way to say it mm -hmm. <laughs> but i had i had lunch with a gentleman and i haven't talked to him i don't think since but uh he said why would you take god out of the equation he said I, i'm not telling you what to do he said but mm. i almost did what you were about to do mm. and if i didn't I there's two of our kids that i would not have if i wow. didn't if i did what you're about to do and I, I was like what are you saying <laughs> so i still was open to it but i told stephanie let me let 
God kind of played this out. But we yeah. had done so much fertility for the first two. I was like, there's no chance we're having mm. another one. Well, we got pregnant right after that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I hear stories like that all the time, like the miracle, mm-hmm. like never in a million years. But I just yeah. told Stephanie, I don't know how to have sex. No, I, se- I don't know how to have sex because <laughs> we were like on a rhythm. It was wait, like, wait. come home at lunch. <laughs> We, I'm ovulating. I had to drop everything and go, and it was like that for for a long oh time. Oh my gosh! And I, talk, I told uh, them yesterday, the masters. I said it was like going to the office, <laughs> and you know you're just working so They're hard. Clock it in. It's like, yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> you know, it's still. I mean, it's still fun. There's nothing yeah. wrong with sex, but at the end of the day, it was work. Uh, <laughs> so the, the woman did. <laughs> Wait, at least you were doing it right because there's been I've like listen to different podcasts and like books on like fertility doctors and they have gotten to the point where they will literally ask people what they are doing to have sex because some people sex is not what they think and uh, like well yeah that's yeah i've heard no and then it's like wait if, and then literally they try it and then a month later they're pregnant and it's like you weren't having sex weren't you <laughs> <laughs> only made it to third base <laughs> wow we were we were literally having sex for all that time, but I think the stress of it all, I think there's a, there's a lot, lot of things uh, going on that you know you just don't realize. And first of all, God is God is the one that gives us all life. Yeah, and He's the one in control of it, so we can't control mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. Uh, only He can. So whatever. So we had three, and then she had my wife had a tubal. This might be oversharing. She's well, gonna want to watch stuff. this later. <laughs> she had a tubal afterwards after the third. Mm-hmm. And we had heard so many stories after that of people getting pregnant after a tubal mm. that I actually went and had my procedure done. So we're like, if, if we get pregnant now, uh, you got it's some strong. You got to name that kid that, Isaac. Yeah, that kid's gonna <laughs> he's he's gonna cure something. Uh, so awesome. the third one was a game changer for us. Oh great, okay. So much so now that when we have all three, there's always one of them that's kind of doing their own thing, and it's a challenge. If I go down back down to one kid, which in the beginning felt like one kid was, you know, a, a, a challenge. Mm-hmm. Now it's like a vacation. I don't. I don't even. I don't even care where they are. It's mm-hmm. like they're. It's so easy with one kid now. Mm-hmm. You're not worried about it. Yeah. The first one you micromanage. With the second one, the first one's getting away with a little bit more. You're focused on the second one. By the time mm-hmm. the third one comes around, that third one, bless their hearts, it's. It's like, okay, you're on your own for a while. <laughs> we, we've learned for the first two that what, yeah. what will what will keep you alive will just keep you there. Mm-hmm. And uh, but he's 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 fun. The third one's fun. Yeah. I don't know that I could do any more, but mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to have any less. Yeah. But I would say that it's it's not easy from a parenting perspective because okay. there's uh, if if you, for your two kids you'll have now you could each spend time with them, mm-hmm. the quality time. Yeah. It's so like with my boys, a lot of times I'm with with them, and I really have to make purposeful time to spend one-on-one time with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, my daughter's in volleyball. My son's in football. My other son has stuff going on. So it's just, it, it, there's a lot going on. It's yeah. awesome. We love mm-hmm. our family. But from a time management perspective, mm-hmm. you got to get serious. Yeah. I remember telling Elena when we first got married, I I realized how selfish I was. Mm-hmm. When I had to now think of someone else before me, and then when we started having kids, it was you, you even you don't have the choice. It was that compounded. You're like, mm-hmm. now I'm in charge of this. Like I and my my buddy that I work out with is going through the same thing. He just his his daughter's like two months old, and this dude is like sleeping beauty. Needs to get his eight hours, and like he's just he's wasted if he doesn't get eight hours of sleep. <laughs> I'm over here like four hours. Wow. <laughs> like I almost feel like elf. Like I got a full 40 minutes. And I had to kind of build a rocking chair, you know, but um, yeah. yeah, it's just one of those things where you, what you're sharing about, you know, like my kids are involved in all these different volleyball, football. I remember my parents looking back now, like so involved in putting everything of themselves to the side so that my brother and I could be like their their main focus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's encouraged me to do the same now with Melina and with our kids and to like be more sacrificial, self-sacrificial because really I get joy from seeing them thriving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, different seasons. I mean, when you have them so young, I I noticed uh, you had pinned a toddler video throwing tantrums on your channel. Mm -hmm. Whenever you have them that age, it is a little bit more of a, it's a different kind of challenge. Now Mm -hmm. when you have a daughter who's 14, um, 
goes from being a physically demanding job to an emotionally demanding job. Yes. Mm-hmm. And girls, no offense, but girls have a lot of hormones <laughs> sure around that do. age. Yeah. And the boys are much more simple. We have to talk to them, hey, you can't say nuts, butts, <laughs> uh, all that stuff yeah. all the time. And well, I'm curious with your daughter, your how has that dynamic changed over the years with you? Because I'm even seeing that with our daughters, who's almost three going on 18. Literally, she, like, yeah. She's sassy. She talks back. She's like the sweetest thing. No, she's, she's like not... a Sour Patch kid. First they're sour, <laughs> then they're sweet, then they're sour uh-huh. again. Somehow. <laughs> but like it's just this back and forth. But how has that in your experience been to see kind of that more physical to emotional and, and the spiritual, of course, moving through all of that mm-hmm. in your experience? Yeah, it's been good. She's uh, They're all at a Christian school here in, in Grapevine. Uh, they they are in church. We go to fellowship church. They're all in church. Uh, they all serve. They've all been saved and baptized. All of our kids. So they're very, very much committed to uh, biblical stuff. We try to instill the faith side of it. But but kids these days are facing so many new challenges. So for my daughter and I, we're we're built a lot more alike. So I mm-hmm. love her and we have a great relationship. But as she's kind of gone through puberty and gotten into those high school years, mm-hmm. the conversations are different. Uh, yeah. I was telling, um, I think I was telling Chad and Tori or somebody at the church today that on our EXO Marriage website, uh, our EXO Marriage YouTube channel, our most popular uh, uh, YouTube video from Dave and Ashley is on oral sex. Mm. So my daughter, she's, she's uh, I don't know, she's upstairs and she comes down. She's trying she's trying to be emotional, but she's faking the whole time. And uh, she goes, Dad, I just got on the Exo Marriage YouTube channel, and y'all's most popular video is on oral sex. I'm so embarrassed. And <laughs> the words you never want to hear from your daughter. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, you don't even know what that means. She goes, No, I do too. My friends talk about it. And I was like, What are you talking about? So it was oh, some gosh. conversation about that. Yeah. Uh, but I thought to myself, you know, at least she's talking, at least we have a ministry where she's able to learn that stuff from a godly perspective. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that she even feels comfortable going downstairs and saying those words to you, you know, <laughs> yeah. well, cause I feel like, awkward, with my, <laughs> I know, but at least she like did it. I feel yeah. like I would never say anything like that around my dad. Well, we've talked to Melanie and I have like part of our pre-marriage, uh, sessions that we would do at our church was to kind of come together and see like what upbringings we each came from and mm-hmm. how that's going to like synergize as we're married and of course having different parents, even from different cultures and different continents, even mm-hmm. and different ways of life. That was a little bit of a rub for us. Cause we kind of came into marriage like with expectations of, Oh, well you're going to do this. Cause my dad always did that. Or you're going to do this. Cause my mom always did that. And mm-hmm. not really actually sitting down and thinking, Hey, what, what lessons can we learn that maybe our parents were flawed in and what are some great noble things that they've done that we want to emulate and and build on. Mm -hmm. And I would say like for us, we want to have, and I think even um, uh, the Hursts were were sharing a little bit about this. Chelsea was saying how they're like, they want to have open conversations about finances in their house. And Mm -hmm. like, we want to be able to talk about sex, not in like a ooey gooey or like in your face kind of a way, but like like, it's a gift from God. He created Mm -hmm. it. And, we have the ability to create life with God through this physical act. And mm-hmm. I don't, I, I remember I, I could never talk about sex with my parents. Yeah. Like it, it wasn't that they were weird about it. Just, you just never talked to them about it. So mm-hmm. the fact that your daughter can go to you and talk well, yeah. about I'm that. I'm going to say this you know? to you. The internet, the internet does not forget. And so at some point your daughter is going to get on y'all's YouTube channel <laughs> and she's going to be watching all your all's she's videos. Gonna be like Ace Ventura, like with the plunger. Yes. Like, she's like going to have a moment of, of no. okay, guys, y'all are talking a lot. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm watching y'all in the bed talking about sex. Uh, we have a clip from uh, y'all's show that we're going to uh, play here quick. Y'all talk about scheduling sex, which I'm a huge believer in. Like you've yeah. got to, mm-hmm. especially with kids, especially at a young age. Yeah. Uh, uh, and we're going to, y'all have that ready to queued up. Uh, they're going to, is it playing behind me yet? They're going to play it. Sex schedules. So, <laughs> like I said, with our kids, it's really hard. We cannot have spontaneous sex. Like, I mean, you can, but you're going to have a toddler looking at you like. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Ask us how we know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it, at this age, though, you can just tell them you're cuddling. She just so yes. We're wrestling. But yeah, wrestling, cuddling, yeah, tickle fight. Greeks did it naked. Yeah. 
and make the time because before that we weren't really ever doing it because we were just too tired we didn't have the time sometimes like it was just we were just not on the same level we weren't communicating with each other so however much you want to have sex I mean I feel like there's no way you can have too much sex you can definitely have too little find out what it is three times a week four times a week every day whatever figure out what works for you guys and then figure out a time for us nighttime is basically the only time that works we work during the day our kids are here our family is here you know we're not really about to be doing that during the middle of the day like yeah that. she's so, gonna see this video one day so uh yeah you can stop it so this is actually super now, important i will say after doing the that, whole scheduling um, thing for a couple of months we have now graduated the couples that don't understand this principle that you can actually they think that everything's got to be spontaneous, that yeah. you're both in the mood at the same time. But if you mm -hmm. don't have zones for sex, uh, sometimes it never happens. So did y'all get mm -hmm. any comments on that yes. episode? Yes. Well. <laughs> Do we? <laughs> well, before we get into that, I just want to talk about, like, being affectionate around your kids. Because my daughter, like, does not like seeing us be affectionate. And that was, like, something we had to, like. From a jealousy perspective? I guess. And it's not like we're like full blown making out like even us like holding hands or hugging or even just like a small kiss like she wouldn't like. And I felt like at first we're like, OK, we're not going to do that around her at all. But then I was like, no, like I want to be able to hold your hand and hug you whenever I want to. Like, I don't care if she's in the room or not. So yeah, it's not like the 1940s been... where you have like the husband in this twin bed on this side of the wall. No, no. Yeah, no. So we kind of had to like go through that and like she's a little bit better about it now. But I feel like at first, like the reason we initially had to do the whole scheduling thing is because like if we did not then it was like we are never going to hug or kiss or do anything more than that. So first that was ob obstacle we had to go through. And then it was like, OK, so we're definitely not doing it enough and we definitely need to. So how are we going to do this? Because it's if you know that like today's sex day, like great a good day today you can get mentally prepared for it yeah yes. and that's something we've talked with chad and tori about too is um what was the uh, analogy it's it's men are like light switches and mm -hmm. women microwaves and ovens yes oh that's well it. well well that's, that's it. <laughs> my peripheral that's it. my peripheral did not pick up the masters joining us <laughs> and so it was like okay you just i'm the i'm the microwave tv dinner like pop me in Ready to go. Mm -hmm. Milena is like to preheat. preheat the oven. Well, it's got to it's got to warm up. Mm -hmm. Almost there. Almost there. All right. Cool. And then <laughs> we're good to go. But the preheating could happen during the day, too, because yeah. I feel like sometimes people think like, OK, as soon as you have to step into the bedroom, you then we can start preheating. It's like, no, it's like it can be a little butt squeeze here, a little <laughs> squeeze here. Like it can be something that happens like throughout the day, which is why I was saying it was kind of like a thing that we had to go through with Alethea because... It could start in the morning. Yeah. It could start later in the day. It could be a text. It could mm -hmm. be a whatever. It could be an act of service. However your spouse likes to receive right. love is... Yeah. You want to like play on certain creative ways to doing that throughout the day or throughout mm -hmm. the week or mm -hmm. wh whatever that might look like because yeah. then you're just setting the tone for later. Mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, we've been kind of building up and anticipating it now it's like it's time to go yeah i still find this a lot that there is a, a sentiment for some women that their husband wants sex too much mm. and they use that as a way to make him feel weird or make him feel like he's uh, not normal yeah uh, guys pretty much i told stephanie i was like i i mean we can go in the, the, the back warehouse of this, <laughs> this store we're in. I don't care. We'll go anywhere. Uh, guys are just dumb like that. They're, uh -huh. they're, we're, we're, we really have most guys. I'm not going to paint with a broad brush. Who knows right. who's out there? Right. But but by and large, women uh, have have a, a tendency to have to kind of get their mind right, get the environment right. Mm -hmm. If there's a kid at the door going, uh, hey, mom, dad, I need some snacks or whatever. <laughs> it's hard to set the mood. Yeah, <clears throat> but there's different seasons of marriage. Sometimes I've found that there's times where it's just awesome, easy. There's no there's no uh, challenges mm -hmm. to get everyone kind of on the same page. And there's other times where there's just too much stress involved. Mm -hmm. There's too many things mm -hmm. involved. Yeah. So do you find that that schedule works 100 percent of the time, 95 percent of the time? Well, that was something I was going to say. Like we're not doing that anymore. That's because how old is that? That was probably like a year ago. 
But that was during a time where our son was still really young. He wasn't even one yet. Mm. So it was like we, we really did have to do that. But now I feel like they're a little bit older, 19 months, and she, our daughter's going to be three, that we don't really need to do that anymore because we do have the time. Um, but then our daughter recently started sleeping in our bed. So then it's like, okay, well, I guess we're going to have to go downstairs. Like we got to get more creative with it. So it I feel like last there's, <laughs> there's different challenges yeah. with that. Could have, could have, yeah. could not have. That's real talk, guys. Yeah. There, there's no there's no way around it. You've mm-hmm. got to find time to do it. And yeah, sometimes you just got to go with what you got. Yep. And, it's, and also to that point, like so another thing Chad and Tori said was like if we're arguing mm-hmm. or something one of us said really ticked the other one off and that could have been earlier in the day and it's like yeah dang it it's trying to it's trying to get in the mood and now it's completely like spoiled Mm -hmm. they're they're like if you're upset like have sex because a lot of times the the physical connection will bring forth the emotional and and further connection that you can kind of mend things up better. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, let's try that. Honey. Yeah, Jordan was really excited. <laughs> really I'm like, excited. I'm like, I, I, can, I can get over things quicker, I think, than yeah. Melina. Yeah. But it's certainly uh, it's certainly something we've seen has, has rang true for us. Too. Mm-hmm. Well, I know being transparent is hard, but I know that a lot of people uh, will learn from that and be encouraged by that. And a lot of people have questions about how they do um, connect on busy seasons with kids. Mm-hmm. So again, your kids are going to see this one day, but congratulations on putting but it all out there. But they'll take notes. It's okay. Yeah, Hopefully they, they can apply it to their marriage. <laughs> you know, it's weird because my parents have been talking about this stuff. I, they used to tell the story. Okay. They would say, Hey, we go walking in the morning. They're talking about scheduling sex. Mm. They go, we would go walking in the morning. We'd come back all sweaty mm. and we would go in the room, lock the door. The kids were getting ready for school and they would, cause we were old enough. My sister was old enough. My sister would drive to school. Mm-hmm. We'd go and then that's when we would have sex. And I, they said this at a seminar one time, and I was like, I remember y'all walking in the door, <laughs> sweaty, and now I have a mental image of you guys walking in the door. That's scarring for some kids. Oh, <laughs> but now fast funny. forward, I'm, yeah. <laughs> we're talking about the same thing, my wife and I. Uh, so it's full circle. And you want to show kid, your kids the the right way to have a marriage, get yeah. started, have sex, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there is a weird period of time where they'll be like, you know, with the plunger, gagging it over. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited this is your first time to Texas. Yes, me too. I did too. not realize that. And this is your first time as well? No, I've been here many, many times. Okay. Yeah. Can You You can't talk about that? It was all Secret Service stuff? Homeland so, Security? Yeah, most of it was, yeah. Are we being monitored right now? Is Joe Biden listening to my phone calls? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what he's listening to or not listening to these days, but that was my former life. So We had, we had a, a, a girl on staff here that her husband was way into IT, but he knew a lot about the dark web mm. and he said it's real and you don't want to go there. Yep. Yeah. Is that true? It is. We have Should I be nervous right now? What do, <laughs> tell me what I don't know and tell me if I should get off the grid. Uh, well, let me see. What can I tell you that I won't have to kill you after? Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, we do have like dark web task forces that'll work with state and locals. And it's, I mean, it's anything. It's like, it's a free mark, open market there. You can buy everything. Um, and so obviously that poses a It's like a very problem. disturbing stuff though. Yeah. I mean, the stuff with um, Operation Underground Rescue and uh, I know Tim Ballard, he was an HSI agent and uh, he was on a human trafficking group and that's very closely tied with the dark web and, and all that like tracking and stuff. I know it happens. It's just at this point I'm like, I can't outsmart these people in their technology, so I'm going to trust the Lord to provide what he needs when he needs mm-hmm. for me and, and what I need in the moment. But uh, hopefully it doesn't have to come to like me I'm paranoid. getting the family off I, I pretty much assume at any point in my time of day, somebody's monitoring me. i got a camera somewhere mm-hmm. or my phone's listening to me. I have a boring life anyway. <laughs> you know, we have Life 360. I don't know if y'all do that with your family, but yeah. you can track everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, probably back in my college days, I wouldn't have wanted that. Mm-hmm. But now it's like, okay, well, going to going to work, going to school, whatever, for picking up kids. It's mm-hmm. a boring life. If if some dark web person wanted to track me, yeah, you know, it's like chloroform. You call me if anything <laughs> happens, huh? I'll be here. You call me. I will. I will something call happens. you. Yes. If something breaks. I'm on the next flight. Yeah. Okay. Good. I need that. I need that in my Rolodex. I have a few uh, buddies that were in uh, seals, and those guys are intense. You talk about seal stuff. Mm-hmm. and their their level of commitment but what they can do 
to uh, to you as a as a human. Those guys are those guys are tough, mentally tough, physically tough as well. So I respect mm-hmm. I respect your game. 100%. I respect what you're doing and and uh, but yes, please always just tell me if I'm if, if I'm a, if I'm on a radar of somebody some a terrorist group that's trying to hack my account or my Bitcoin. <laughs> Chad and I want to know if our Bitcoin's being uh, hacked. That's what we want to know. And it's all decentralized, and it's even hard for law enforcement to like actually get a, a handle on because it's all you know. A transaction happens. It's like you can reverse it, or you know. It's just but there's so many. There's so many countries through cybersecurity trying to hack into all of our systems mm-hmm. on a daily basis. I always think like there's so many cases because actually a lot of people don't know Secret Service is very involved with like financial crimes. That's actually how they started. Well, boring history lesson was like all the counterfeit currency that was going around right after the Civil War, where you kind of have this uh, split from North and South, and there's like some states are printing their own money and like circulating that and then they're trading with other states like oh what's this oh we'll do our own too and so uh lincoln like basically enacted a uh a law for the treasury to have a law enforcement arm to regulate and stop all this counterfeiting going on so we still actually retain some of that but it's all a lot of it's gone now digital or Mm. um, electronic with like card and, and id theft and all that bank fraud but um, crypto especially is like Secret Service had one of the biggest cases um, out of Chicago of I think there was a wallet of over a billion in crypto that mm-hmm. was all illegitimate and using for all kinds of like uh, criminal funding. So, wow. Um, yeah. It's, it's is this crazy. the most recent one? The, the Department of Justice that, that busted that? So there's a little rub here okay. with the alphabet boys as we call them uh-huh. fbi hsi dea secrets <laughs> like they're all the alphabet boys so secret service did it but of course the bureau comes in and they have to take credit for it got it so got it. we we got you we, i that's, see you that's how, <laughs> I, that's see how it happens so we got to try to play nice with everyone but um that's yeah it was originally a secret service agent that everyone want, wants in on the case like nope this is mine you can co-case it so but well, yeah it's crazy there's so much of it that that we just don't know, and I always, I'm always of the mindset of, like, if these people doing stuff illegally and for criminal profit would actually put their skills to good, like, think how how much different, like, that'd be a game changer if mm-hmm. they could actually, and sometimes they will, like, they'll flip and they'll, they'll be like, all right, uh, you caught me, and I don't want to go to prison for the rest of my life, so yeah, I'll help you and like teach you guys stuff. On Amazon Prime right now, Reacher, have you watched it yet? Mm-mm. You need to binge Reacher. Like you are, you're you are reacher. You're like strong, but his uh, whole storyline is about counterfeit money. His brother was in the Homeland Security, hmm. and Reacher's kind of like I don't know. Just watch; it's awesome. It's good. Have you watched Blacklist? Okay. So the Masters are talking about Blacklist. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. I can't tell you what I'm watching because it's on HBO, and probably nobody would would, would know. But uh, <laughs> it's a really good show called Succession that I'm enjoying right now. Mm-hmm. But the uh, I just said it; it's on HBO. Succession. Yes, I'm watching that. <laughs> But I also just watched uh, uh, Reacher, which was really good. Okay. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about is we're y'all are in town for our conference, mm-hmm. the EXO conference, mm-hmm. and this is our biggest conference of the year uh, yeah. that we're doing. We go back to back. We go uh, from Dallas to Houston, and both are, are really large conferences. This is the first one that we do mm-hmm. of the year, and it's Valentine's weekend. Mm-hmm. So we have uh, 3,000 people come in. We have over 300 churches that are going to be simulcasting it. We've got Chad and Tori on stage, going to be doing some MC stuff as well. Uh, so talk to me about the conference. This is y'all's first, mm-hmm. I guess, experience really with XO. Yeah. Talk about a little bit of your, your, what you're expecting, what you've yeah. heard. Yeah. Um, the last time when Chad and Tori came, we hung out with them like mm-hmm. straight off like the plane. They had like just gotten done with the conference. We surprised the last at the time. airport. Yeah. Well, we surprised Chad. Yeah. Because Chad, it's hard to surprise Chad. So we had Tori in on it. But um they could not stop raving about it. And we're like, okay, like I really want to go. And because of our third baby, we really want to put our marriage first and kind of like prepare ourselves. Cause with each baby that we've added, our marriage always gets pushed to the back burner. And so we really want to break that habit this time and like make sure that our marriage is at the very front of that That's good. because then we don't have to do as much like damage control like yeah. if it's that we're on top of it and then we don't have to go through all of that so it's a law of entropy right like things are winding down you move from order to chaos not the other way around so yeah. as you add more wild cards into the mix and another like kind of wave that you're trying to ride it's like okay well let's be proactive and do something 
mm-hmm. to invest in our marriage together, yeah. even if it's only a weekend mm-hmm. and just be preparing for the Lord to work in our hearts, both yeah. individually and together as a couple. And mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked that it's Bible centered and Christ centered because there's, while there might be other like beneficial marriage conferences or things out there that's maybe general or, or not, not Christian necessarily. I mean, God created marriage. He created the relationship between man and woman. So for us to go back to the source of truth and the source of marriage, I'm, I'm excited to have everything from all the speakers to all the conversations that happen offline between uh, that's that's what I'm looking forward to is just to see how the Lord works and all of that. Yeah, it's a great mm-hmm. experience. It really is. And our lineup this year is is great because we, I tried to, was just my dad doing all of the sessions I and mean, he's great. I mean, he's like uh, the, the Michael Jordan of marriage ministry, I guess. I don't know. Uh, the, the, so there's, there's, there's him and his content. He's 68 now. And he's, I mean, he's in still in the prime of, of his life, but mm-hmm. there's, you know, Dave and Ashley who are in their forties. They've got four mm-hmm. boys. They've got a different sort of flavor on things. Uh, there's uh, a lot of different speakers now. I think we have 12 to 13, 14 speakers. Uh, I was part of the conference that are touching anything from from money to blended families to to mm-hmm. whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Marriage is hard, and you need to find some some information that can help you get to that next uh, phase. And also, intentionality about your marriage is important. So if we can get couples there mm-hmm. and get them connected and, and kind of carve mm-hmm. off that time, uh, it's it's doing something spiritually that they always don't always find. Uh, you know, it's impactful there, but it carries for a while. Mm-hmm. A, lot, a lot of times, people make this their annual kind of time together. They, yeah. they come and they, we have 35 states represented. Couples from UK, Canada come down. Mm-hmm. So it's a really fun, interesting time for for marriage. And I love it. We we have a that this is our um, 28th year in ministry uh, wow. as a ministry. I've been here for about 16 years, and marriage is you know it's, it's one of those things like. Uh, there's certain industries, taxes, there's always gonna be taxes. There's always gonna be marriage. People want to get married mm-hmm. and, and do it the right way. So it's exciting. It's good. Uh, I love uh, helping here at the organization, but I'm glad y'all are here this weekend. That's We're true. honored to be here. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. Uh, Chad was supposed to send me a picture of you with an Afro, but he never did. So. <laughs> <laughs> that one will just be our little secret. No, yeah. I can, I could definitely get that to you. Yeah. Well, th- thank you. Nobody <laughs> believes me when I tell them I had an afro back in seventh grade. I, like I wanted know. to see it. It it was it was an afro. I could throw a pick in it. Wait, hold on. Are you a Lions fan? No. Uh. I, had, I had to think about it for a second. Well, because no, I've given up on them. Well, with Stafford being traded and going to the Rams and going to the Super Bowl, I I, I hope little... I hope they do win. I'm I'm voting for the Rams. I am too. And the Cowboys sting, so let's not go there. <laughs> uh, no, it was great to meet y'all. Thanks you for being too. on here. Thank, Thank you. So much.